it is all in the family. His grandfather was a professional heavyweight, his father an amateur, and his brother a professional. He has given a new definition to the term shot fighter because when he was 19 and an amateur, a bullet pierced the calf of his left leg. He says that that has influenced how he fights. He fights as a rare right-handed southpaw. The lead hand is his best hand and his most versatile hand. All right. So the excitement builds in Pittsburgh. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the A.J. Palumbo Center here in DuPage University, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Michael Acre Boxing Promotions is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Lightweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with your undisputed, undefeated champion of beers, Budweiser, Three Rivers Boxing, and Bella Entertainment. Sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, Executive Director Greg Serb, Western State Commissioner Andy Kidd DePaul. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest on the 10-point must system are Don Ackerman, Dave Hess, and George Katulis. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Ernie Sharif. And now, to the men and women currently serving in harm's way as members of the armed forces of the United States of America from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing blue, trimmed with white, and officially weighing 134 and one half pounds. His outstanding professional record stands at 39 victories, including 29 knockouts with five defeats and one bout even. From Hobart, Indiana, the challenger, former WBU junior lightweight world champion, Angel Gut Jesus Manfredi. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, and weighing in at 134 pounds. He comes to the ring tonight with a perfect professional record, consisting of 34 bouts, 34 victories, including 14 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the pride of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the reigning, defending, undefeated, RBF Light. find out. Angel Manfredi suggested to us, not in exactly these words, that he would attack Spadafora early and try to pierce the hometown fighter's confidence. He wants to try to show Spadafora here in this first round that he's at another level of competition. It was interesting where I was complimenting him on his great defensive fight when he falls with Diaz, where he placed his punches, took his time. He says he's throwing that all out the window. He said even though he was successful with Diaz, he wants to do, throw a hundred punches around in this fight. And it's interesting, he said his favorite punch that he was working on was his left uppercut, which he's delivered twice. 
And also, one of the favorite punches of Spadafore is his right uppercut. Angel is hoping to counter Spadafore's right jab with a hooking left uppercut right through the arc of the punch. Spadafore is a guy who has that knack for standing in front of you and making you miss. Hey, you know, he said his idol, according to his information sheet, is Tommy Hearns as a fighter. But you can tell he's been watching a lot of Pernell Whitaker films. He doesn't move around a lot to be as tall as this. He likes to twist, give you angles, and shoot little short pin punch punches. Very accurate puncher. So that's that Pernell Whitaker move right there, dipping to the inside. So the size of the ring really doesn't matter that much for him. And Freddie whacking to the body with the right hand. Notice how he stands sideways to his opponent, his chin tucked in. It's about a four up. Yeah. The classic old boxing style. One of the elements of Spadafora's game, which Manfredi described as, quote, amateurish, is the noise that Spadafora makes when he punches. Manfredi says, I'll be able to time his punches because he makes that amateur wishing noise every time he throws one. Yeah, something because he makes that noise doesn't mean that he's amateurish. <laughs> but Lots of guys yeah, make yeah, noise when they throw punches. That, yes. I think uh, Juan Gomez. The WBC, well, used to be WBC cruiserweight, cruiserweight champion until he relinquished the championship. He does the same thing. Break, step back, please. Step back, please. Listen. Break. Well, man, Freddie may have thrown a lot of punches in round one. We'll get the copy box numbers in a moment, but he certainly didn't land enough of them to snow Spadafora under with any giant flurry. No, no one at this time has been able to establish a good pattern. Real nice. A little more rhythm, a little more rhythm. You'll get right into your flow. You're getting hit. Your, your right hook is landing all day long. There's a fast on back of my hand. So I, I, want you to, I want you to use more of your left crosses than your right hook as he charges in on you and look for the uppercut. You can, hey, I want you to get off first. When he's leaning right into your right uppercut, you gotta step in a little bit, okay? Don't reach with your punches. And don't jump straight back. Go to the side a little bit, okay? Stay relaxed and breathe. Come back with the hook. Yeah. He's open for it. Showcase a little bit of rhythm and stuff and start using no, your right fine. hooks a little more. All right, he's okay, running right in. Don't get hit with those tucker with his head. Keep going right. Well, you saw the CompuBox numbers that indicated Angel Man Freddy doubled Paul Spadafora's right. punch output in round number one. Spadafora only 7 out of 40. Man Freddy 19 out of 81 by CompuBox estimate. And now Man Freddy seems to want to produce more activity to begin round two. Spadafora with an odd lump on his forehead could have come from a clash of heads. Doesn't look dangerous. <laughs> fighting a very intelligent fight, but the position that Manfredi holds his right hand and to me seems like it should make it very easy eventually for Spider Ford to start landing straight left hands through the center. Already between rounds one and two, you heard Jesse Reed, Spider Ford's trainer, suggesting to him that maybe the jab wouldn't be a big weapon tonight, that he should look for right hooks and left cross. <laughs> right hand. Crowd chanting, spatty, 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 trying to lift their fighter. 
The Spanish Fury has been very good with short punches, very accurate punches on the inside. Even though he's taller, he seems to fight better on the inside. The biggest problem he's going to get caught with is that right hand hook that Manfredi shoots just as Spanifor starts pulling out sometimes. He gets hit with a right hook. There it is right there once again. Yep. As he starts pulling out in a bad angle, Manfredi lands the right hook. In fact, that is probably Manfredi's most effective punch at this stage. getting to Manfredi's body. Angel blocking the left with the right hand. It's largely a chess match through the first two rounds. Definitely a chess match. I'm just a little concerned maybe with Spatter for not bruising up. Seemingly his skin seems to look like it may bruise up a little bit easier than Manfredi. Once again, Manfredi getting turned with those right hands again. And Angel, when he gets inside on you, throws hard. He tries to make his punches count on the inside. It hurt Diaz in the late going, and we'll see how Paul Falcora is able to hold up. Listen, inside you're tearing that belly up nice. I want more left crosses and right hooks There's when he comes running Justin. in. And then start showcasing. There's start a showcasing. the back of my hand, baby. More combinations. Yes, I like the way you're working inside. Now look, turn your shoulder a little more. Just a little more. Stay in front of him. Keep moving. I want you to throw that jab, then throw the right hand. All right? Close your ass in this. Try not to stand in front of him. Lead. You're letting him take the lead. You got to get off first. You got to stop. You got to take the lead. You want to win the fight. Okay. You got to throw more punches when you get in there. Stay relaxed. Let yes. the punches flow. Let them flow. Yes. Right? Oh, right. 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 right hand up and down. Check it out. Copy box numbers considerably more right. even in round two. Spadafora 18 of 51. And Freddy 15 of 77. Spadafora, by copy box estimate, landing 14 of 28 power shots. Chess match continues as round three begins. Spadafora calls himself a ping, ping, ping fighter because he really doesn't commit to his punches. How many pings equals a real puck? By his own admission, he said he doesn't consider himself a puncher, and he, he doesn't even really believe that he can develop punching power. He says that because of the injury that he sustained to his left leg. But he says physically he don't think there's any lightweight in the ring that could physically move him around. Well, I think he's probably right because he's as big as a welterweight. And, and no doubt in a year or so we'll be moving up to the junior welterweight division. He's a very big... Lightweight. Fora moving Matt Freddy back with a left hand. That had some pop on. Angel is so conscious of trying to set up his right hand that he's giving Spadafora a chance to land straight left, and Spadafora yeah. is taking advantage by leading with them. And actually, when Matt Freddy does deliver his right hands, if you notice, it's not with any punching power, so to say. It's just primarily just to try to get points. He's never loading up on his right hand, even when he does land it. And Spadafora, reading Angel very well now, midway through round three, finding opportunities to land his left hand because of the way Manfredi's setting up. Fred is also going to have to keep his right hand a little closer to the center. 
because eventually I think he's going to start again hit with straight left hand punches. Battle for showing finesse, timing, and accuracy that Manfredi might not have expected from him, particularly here in round three. with a featherweight doubleheader. Prince Nassim Hamed makes his first ring appearance since his loss to Marco Antonio Barrera last year. He faces Spain's Manuel Calvo. Also that night, Johnny Tapia, his sights set on a fight with Hamed later this year, takes on Angel Vasquez. That's March 23 on HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. You are watching tonight the new Pittsburgh kid, Paul Spadafora, trying to reestablish boxing tradition in Pittsburgh, where Larry, in the first half of the 20th century, some of the greatest fighters in the sport emerged. Well, there was Harry Greb, the great middleweight, the only man to defeat Gene Tunney, Fritzy Zivic, an outstanding welterweight who beat Henry, the great Henry Armstrong, in two of their three fights, fought LaMotta four times, Robinson twice. Billy Kahn, of course, light heavyweight champion, best known for his almost fight against Joe Lewis. And the last man there was Charlie Burley, who was good enough to beat Archie Moore, but never got a shot at a title. Harold Letterman, how do you have Paul Spattle for an Angel Man Freddy through three? Okay, Jim, very, very interesting fight. I got a two rounds to one, 29-28, Paul Spattle for Jim, I get that first round to the very aggressive Angel Man Freddy. Thought he did real well, landed some solid right hands. Paul Spattle for started to get off in round two, and I think he's done real nice with that right chip, you know, straight left combination. So I think Paul Spattle for is outbox Man Freddy in the second and third. He's got a two rounds to one lead. Interestingly enough, that lump is coming back on Spattle for his forehead. I know they do, they're doing a nice set of control again, but I'm sure as heck it, it must be bothering Spadafora. It came from a brief head encounter in the first round. It seems that Manfredi, in order to get his punches in, is throwing quick, short, Punches, powerless punches. Ping, ping punches, yeah. just like. The Spadafora is actually uh, punching harder than Manfredi, which is a big mistake on Manfredi's part. The fact that Spadafora is going to win a decision, probably if it goes to the decision, and Manfredi is shooting right hands with no power, and he's not doing enough of those either. Well, what what Spadafora is showing is that his footwork. And his understanding of his body and angles are just nifty enough to take away some of Manfredi's power. You don't easily get a clean shot at Spadafore. No. You're seeing a rough version of Pernell Whitaker in that tonight. It's easy to talk about going in and delivering with power against a guy who obviously has less punching power than you. It's not so easy to do if the guy knows how to defend. Lots of heavyweights think they're going to knock out Chris Bird. Then they get into the ring with him and learn dif learn differently. And that's why a lot of fighters who are power punchers quit punching with power because they realize that they're not going to want to hit anything, so they just start punching lightly until they can find that they have confidence that they're going to land the solid blow. So we'll see if Manfredi can regain his confidence here. He begins to get closer and hits Battleforo with more authority in the second half of this round. from time to time. And Freddy begins to develop a rhythm again. Oh, a little more snap. A little more right. snap. A little bit more Everything speed. else is fine. A little more snap. Work off the animals, buddy. We got a better angle. Okay. There's the bastard. All right. 
Now listen, don't don't just be too relaxed. Get a little more rhythm going right. and a little snappy, all right? Start out hustling. You gotta get up first, okay? When you, know, when you throw that jab, when you throw that jab, come back with Close that hook. And listen. Then throw the right hand. You can't hand. win the fight from the outside. You can't win. I'm winning. From the I'm winning. Say, man, you better go in there. And get I know him. what I'm doing. Uh, all right. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him, Taylor. Yes, Let's go then. Let's hey, go. You you one, one, we can't hey, wait. Through one body shot. Come back with the other side. Yes. Okay, you work too hard. Let's go. Start second that body. Let's go. Well, you heard Angel. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to get him. when John Taylor was saying you can't win the fight from the outside. The way spatter four punches, there wouldn't be, it doesn't seem there would be a big price to pay for trying to get inside. Well, if he gets too far behind on points, he's going to have a real problem with getting caught up in this fight. Harold Letterman's got it even through four. And so have I. But right now, he's fighting Spadafora's fight. Exactly. And I think that's the point John Taylor was trying to make. But Angel said, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Defecting a lot of Spanish force punches. Crowd responds there to Spadafora throwing, but Manfredi blocked two of the punches with his glove as he blocks one of those. Finally, Spadafora gets a left hand through. One thing I notice about Spadafora is that he's extremely relaxed in the ring. Space. He's fighting with a lot of angles, using his shoulders, keeping his chin tucked in his glove. Very good. Then in a way, very seldom can Manfredi get a stationary target where he can shoot two or three punches in a row. Well, Paul Spadafora quit school to become a fighter. This isn't a guy that somebody had to talk into being a fighter. He wanted this very badly. Manfred is putting a lot of pressure on it and making Spadafora throw a lot of punches now. And starting to get to his body. Yes. Real nice. nice. Huge Al right there. A very nice round. I got it. It's gone. I'll get rid of it again. I got rid of it before. I got rid of it Yes. What? This. Paul, I want the same running those numbers. Hey, run some bad. After when you have southpaws fighting right-handers and both of them bending inside, you end up with butts just because of the position of the batters. No one doing it on purpose, and this was a perfect example right there. Usually the guy who's the shortest or who has his head to lowers benefits more so than the guy who's straight up. Here you are, grab oh, I want another round like that. Oh, oh, that circle oh, oh, the right. Well, that is a massive welt on the head of Spadafora. So how big a problem is the welt going to be, Emmanuel? I don't believe that the welt's going to be a big problem unless they end up with a butt again in the same spot, but I, I don't think it's going to be a big factor. 
the fact that it spread out over such an area instead of being closer to the eye where it would possibly obstruct his vision. Copy box numbers through round five. Angel Manfredi's averaging 78 punches per round and has thrown more than 115 punches more than Paul Spadafora so far. But Spadafora has been the more accurate of the two fighters. And it's a tough enough fight to score that it's hard to know exactly who's ahead or behind at this moment. Close fight in Pittsburgh. I would say Spadafora should be ahead, I believe, on punches, but I can see the gap is getting closer because the fight is moving much like the Diaz fight into the arena that Manfredi wants it to be in. Manfredi is forcing Spadafora to throw a lot of punches, and he's getting closer and closer to him. Referee Ernie Sharif asked Spadafora to keep them up. The crowd boos. More and more, Manfredi just walking to Spadafora. I think the fact that Manfredi has lost to the big fights, the fighters that he's fought, a lot of time after he came out just shooting punches very reckless and carelessly and got in trouble may be a part of him being a little cautious, being much more technical as this fight is moving on. If he can score an upset tonight like he did with Diaz, not only will he have to score an upset, this fight will give him the lightweight championship of the world. It will give him a lightweight belt. Manuel. Please. Fight. Well, tell you, it would be the Don't tell him any difference. Yes. <laughs> it would and be a little bit, a little bit later Jesus. this spring, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather Jr. will fight Jose Luis Castillo for the lightweight championship of the world. That's the point Larry's uh, yeah. trying to make there. <laughs> but the, right. belt, the belt is something Manfredi very badly wants. Right. And you know, local boy is making good right now. <laughs> for the most part, most of the boxing crowd has not respected Spanafora as being a real solid champion. This is the fight that he needs to win very impressively. And so far, he has not been unimpressive. But neither has he won the fight. Counter right hand by Spadafora got a big cheer here in Pittsburgh. Halfway through. Everybody's working. Starting March 28, catch the return of On the Record with Bob Costas. In season two, look for more of Bob with special guests from the worlds of sports and entertainment. Please note on the record's new day and time, Thursday nights at 10.30 p.m., only on HBO. When he starts throwing them punches, you got to throw right with him. Understand me? Cut him off. Throw that right hand, go underneath, and snap it up. Snap it up. Double it up. Point him about his shoulder and let yes. go. Yes. Watch your head. Okay, All right, I'm watching. Hey, don't let this guy get dirty with you. Okay. Start punching. My hand. Put that on my neck. Put the ice, ice on the give neck. me ice back. Like okay. Paul, deep breath. Yeah. Ice. You've got all kinds of stamina. Okay, Start sorry, using let's go. Right. Let's four and five sorry. at a time. Okay. Okay. Run, they'll get the crowd. Spadafora outlanded Manfredi by copy box numbers in round six. Right. Crowd will be trying to lift the Pittsburgh fighter to a late round surge. Harold Letterman, how do you have it halfway through? I get you. So far, I'm impressed by the quick combinations, just like you saw there of Paul Spadafora. That right-left combination, constantly getting in. I got it 58, 56, four rounds to two, Paul Spadafora. I got Red Freddy grounds one and four. When he was aggressive, he got inside, threw hard right hands. But other than that, I think it's the boxing ability of Spadafora. A, a south court with a decent right hand, good combinations. Left hook to the body by Manfredi. Moves Spadafora a foot or two back. Manfredi's going to have to pick it up this round if he has any type of a strategy that he's going to win the fight. Because if he loses the next couple of rounds, it's going to be very hard for him to come on, particularly going down the stretch when the hometown crowd starts cheering on their favorite fighter. There's a good quick left inside by Manfredi, and he begins to attack Spadafora's ribcage with a purpose.
referee that's refereeing the fight, Ernie Sheriff, in the 70s was one of the most popular amateur boxers in Pittsburgh. They used to call him Little Ernie. He used to have the crowd standing on their feet when he would fight here. step it up in this round, Emmanuel, and he has tried. I think this was a key round in the fight, and if the pattern goes the way I think it is, I think Spanafor is going to become even more impressive as the fight goes on instead of Manfredi. I think Manfredi's got in the pattern and he can't get out of it now. Hit it back, punch it. which most of the time is not implemented. Punches that are landed without any body weight you really should not score points. And, and what Spadafora is doing, even though he's supposed to be the non-puncher, he's punching with more power than Manfredi. Manfredi is pity pad punching. Very seldom turning four body weight into the punches that he does land. And he's pity pad punching because he's found that he can't get a solid stream exactly. of punches to go on because Spadafora keeps giving him angles, twisting, turning, maneuvering around. And he can only get one punch off, and after that, it's all over. So he won't load up with his power. <laughs> and you see that he shot three little punch punches off, and then he dipped off at an angle before Manfred could retaliate. His greatest success has been simply to make Manfredi fight his fight. Absolutely. Very successful, Eddie. Come on, step back to him. Watch those all. Fight. You. 
get to knock this guy out. You understand? Let's get serious. Let's work this guy. Yeah. Don't let him throw three gotcha. more punches. You got to pick it up. Yeah. You hear me? Yes. You got to start okay. picking it up. You can go there. I don't know what it is. Stop jabbing. Stop. Combinations like Spatterforce landed here, even though all of them don't land, he still landed one, but it's, it creates excitement with the crowd, the speed and the fury which he's on, and then the fact that he dips away with such cute moves is what's keeping the crowd excited. Spatterfora uh, is a kind of a baseball team that manufactures runs. They're good at, they have speed, they go from first to third, they sacrifice. They do all the right things. They don't win with three-run home runs. Now, that's a great analogy. He's like one of those St. Louis Cardinals teams that shows up in first place on September 15, and you're like, why are they there? You know, back in the old days before they had McGuire. for a ringside judge to go against that kind of work and that kind of crowd reaction. It's quite the other crowd in addition. And I figured this was going to happen. Going down the stretch, spatter for whatever he did earlier, he would be doing better the last half. Well, we have said earlier that Manfredi has beaten the B and plus fighters, but he, and B plus fighters, but he hasn't beaten the A and A plus fighters. He's not beating this fighter, so either Spatter 4 is an A or an A-plus, I suppose. Well, give him credit. Spatter 4 has fought with great confidence from the beginning, and he himself said this was his biggest right, test. Right, right, right. He freely acknowledged, I'm going to learn something in there because I haven't been in with somebody as good as Angel before. But he also thought that he was up to the task, and so far he is. In all honesty, after studying a lot of Spatter Force fights, this is really is his easiest fight to one of them. Even though if the expectations are there and he's fighting a big name, Manfred is a really easy fight for him tonight. Even when Manfred does punches, it's really not a threat to him. So at the class of the lightweight division, is guys like Floyd Mayweather and Castillo, who Mayweather's going to fight later on this year. Well, that's a different class right here. I think it's better for is going to have to do a lot more than just angle and pity pat punch himself. He's going to have to do, but you know, Spatter for you can't really underestimate because he's a developing young fighter. And he's a big kid for a lightweight, too. Very few pure boxers boxing history have become popular gate attractions outside of their own hometowns. It would be interesting to see if Spadafora can carry his popularity to Las Vegas or New York. I agree. You know, I look back in history and I think of, uh, of a Benny Leonard, a Willie Peps, Cornell Whitaker, but very few and far between. Yep. Cornell Whitaker may be the last of the recent fighters. Larry, let's take a look at the point we've made about Angel Manfredi losing to the A and A-plus fighters. Here are the key losses in Manfredi's recent career. Yeah, all two uh, top fighters, Diego Corrales, who was undefeated at the time, Stevie Johnson, very good lightweight champion, and, of course, Floyd Mayweather Jr., who just overwhelmed him and even in those fights that he i saw him lose i thought he fought a much more spirited performance than he's put out tonight it's like batting against a junk ball Step, pitcher bend your knees a little more it's hard to get a yeah, rhythm work that body. and you can look at him yeah. when he moves away you got to step with him and throw the punches he's, 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 come on let's go go get it do it baby. Spadafora started slowly in the fight, has built the tempo, particularly from round six onward. Now we go to the 10th of a scheduled 12. 
Three quarters of the way through. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Jim, I'll tell you something. I think the last five rounds have been a disaster for Angel Man Freddy. The shots that he's landed just don't seem to do any harm. Paul Spadaforo with those combinations, certainly, I think he's scared five rounds in a row. And Man Freddy hasn't landed enough of the big right hands that he just landed. I mean, so anyway, 88, 83, seven rounds to two. Paul Spadaforo, I think he's a complete commander this fight, Jim. I have the same score. So glad you took note, Harold, of the big right hand that Manfredi landed while you were talking. That's <laughs> the best punch he's thrown in about five rounds. Maybe the only power punch he's thrown the entire night. Seemed to land right under the neck on the top of the chest. Uh, Emmanuel, there are two other what I would call pure boxers in the game tonight in the top echelon in the game these days. And they would be Smoke Gainer, the featherweight, and Chris Bird in the heavyweight. Different styles completely than the one we're looking at. How would you compare them? Compared to Spadafor? The styles, yes. Well, I would say that Bird is a very, very, very difficult fighter to fight because he's a specialist at angles and he's so relaxed. But to beat Bird, you have to just come out and fight. You don't think too much. If he gets you into the pawn and the thinking games, he can be difficult for any fighter in the world. But I'm talking just in terms of their styles because one of the things that's interesting about Spadafora is that even though he is a pure boxer, he's standing there right in front of his opponent, delivering punches, countering punches. He's not pity patting now. He's throwing nice, stiff ping, 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 pings, and they, they're accumulating. Well, I, I would say that in looking at Spadafora, you're seeing like right. nothing but a bigger version of uh, Cornell Whitaker. He's using a lot of angles, right. Christian. And, and Chris Bird, Chris Bird's like to lay in the ropes. He doesn't even really move a lot much. He just totally relaxed, and then he comes back with punches when you least expect it. And I think he gets most of the fighters out of their rhythm. He gets them to play in his right. game. Come on, great. And that's his biggest asset, I think, is to get them to play the type of game that he likes, which is just thinking, playing games, and he wins the fights that way. And that's why Ike Abiyabuchi was successful because he just came out and just kept throwing punches even though he may have looked bad in the beginning. He just kept throwing punches until he eventually was able what to penetrate. And how would you compare him to Gaynor? Gaynor, I think, is a classy boxer. I think he's an upright, flashy boxer, totally different. Utilizes his legs, his upper body movement, and he utilizes the ring a lot. He's a moving boxer. Good punches in this round by Manfredi. He displays the necessary sense of urgency, if not yet any technical mastery of Spadafora. I'll put it back further. Here's my piece. Keep boxing, baby. Use that jab. Paul, come here, baby. Listen to me. Lay back, lay back, lay back. So I can... This round, next two rounds, I want you busy with your hands. Don't hold them. And you dig that body. You forgot your uppercuts in this fight. Start turning on him and throwing those uppercuts, all right? Yeah, throw that right hand. Come underneath. No respect. No pin back. Everything is good. Let's yeah. go. Take a deep breath. You got to dig deep. Spatter for a shoe, so it's a little straight, short punches. And Manfred is, for whatever reason, fighting with his hand wide, and he's always getting through because his punches are much straighter and direct to the point. Sam Colonna and John Taylor, the co-trainers in Angel Manfredi's corner, stepped forward there to say, Angel, we need you to go out and seize this fight. Show the passion that you haven't shown us so far. And Manfredi stepped out of the corner, waiting for the bell, and said, I'm going to go do it. Now, he did fight with more urgency in the tent.
therefore his accuracy with the straight left hand has been a factor. He's been able to punch right between Manfredi's gloves over and over. That's because Manfredi keeps his right hand too far to the side to be fighting a southpaw. You fight a southpaw, you should always keep your right hand directly in front of your chin, not on the side of your head. Swelling under Angel's right eye as Spatafora's left hand has begun to tell a tale there. Good professional fighters rarely get hit by hard, clean shots. And Paul Spatafora has not been hit by very many hard, clean shots tonight. Manfred hasn't thrown him anyway. If he well, but uh, you give credit to Spatafora because there is a cause and effect. Coming down the home stretch about 
20 lengths ahead. On his meeting yesterday, he said he used to like to see Tommy Hearns do that in fights. But he can do what he wants now. He's got this fight wrapped up. So you think maybe he was throwing that backhand punch for your benefit? No. Nah. <laughs> Giving it a little of the old Tommy Hearns? If he would do something to make me happy, to knock him out. I love knockouts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Too many decisions for you. I did not like decisions. <laughs> Wait, come back to you. Come on. It's a hot night in this arena. Right. And both fighters show the wear and tear of 12 rounds. Castillo is regarded as the champion. Floyd Mayweather will try to take his title away. After that fight, Spadafora will rank second. Juan Lascano is coming into a position to challenge for the lightweight championship. And these others, Balbi and Doreen, are going to have a rematch of their fabulous fight. Stevie Johnson is still around. There's Manfredi and Julio Diaz, a young man, still with much time to become a champion. He, could, he, know, he fought all his fights in his hometown. This time he got beat. He got outboxed. He got out slicked. He got outgunned. He didn't go up that far. Just to show everybody. You went it. Not like a boxer like that easy. You went it easy, baby. Hey, you went it easy. He's loved that. That's all. That's all. So you've heard the statements hey, on both all. fighters campaigning hey, well, before our cameras for the decision. We win this easy. Oh, let me keep that on. And now let's go to Michael Buffer to find out who won. Gentlemen, here in Pittsburgh, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. All three judges scored about the same. Don Ackerman, George Kachoulis, and Dave Hess have it. 115 to 113 for the winner by unanimous decision, the pride of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Still the undefeated IBF lightweight champion of the world, the Pittsburgh. box numbers total punches landed spot of four landing 23 more Manfredi throwing 247 more punches and therefore spot of four's connect percentage much higher at 28 percent jabs spot of four landing twice as many as Manfredi they both threw in the neighborhood of 350 jabs Manfredi simply not able to get his jab there against the longer fighter, Paul Spadafora. And now, as the crowd rejoices over Spadafora's 35th consecutive victory, Larry Merchant stands by with the unbeaten lightweight. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, go, Paul. You waited a long time for a fight in which you can make a statement to the world beyond your hometown. 
about where you stand in your division. Give us your thoughts after this fight. First of all, I'd like to thank God, my, all my Spadafore team, my Spadafore family. And uh, I knew I was going to come in here and win this fight. I thought I was going to win this fight easier. But I, I did a little bit too much clown, had my hands down a little bit. I started getting in the flow and the rhythm, so I didn't want to get out of it. And yes, now it's time for me to step it up. That was a good test for me. And I'd like to go out here and why, get... Why were you able to dictate the terms of the fight? Do you, do you feel you do that to all fighters you fight, uh, even someone? who has the credentials of Manfredi? Larry, the rap on me is I'm not a strong guy, but I'm, in, I'm stronger than all these lightweights. Believe it, I tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm physically stronger. Maybe not punch as hard, but I'm stronger than these guys. So that's I can right. dictate the pace. That's the right. pace, is when I want to set the pace, that's when the pace gets set. So you believe that no matter who's in front of you, you can frustrate them and make them fight your fight? Uh, most definitely. I'm, I'm very confident about who I am and, and about, about my style of a boxer. And I feel that I'm, young, I'm a younger champion. I'm bound to get better. I just got to change my, change my habits up on the outside life. And I think I'll be around here a long time, Larry. Long time. Who in, uh, in your scenario would you box next? Everybody talks about a showdown with Mayweather someday. Do you think that's off in the distance? or do you want to go there right away? I would like to go there right away because everybody heard this stuff about him talking bad about me, about how he wants to break my nose, shatter my jaw, this and that, all that personal stuff. So I'd like to go there and get that fight right away to right. prove to myself that, I could, that it wasn't an accident in the gym, that we can get it on. Let's do it. Let's do what we got to do. I'm able to do it. Believe what I tell you. Do you think you can have a crowd as enthusiastic on your side when you leave Pittsburgh? as when you are in your hometown. Why not, Larry? I'm a good guy. Anywhere I'm a good person. World, baby. I'm a good person. I'm a good boxer. But most of all, I'm a good, I'm a good guy. Right. And why wouldn't people want to see me fight? Thank you so much That's right, for that performance right. today. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, let's bring in Emmanuel Stewart here. He's campaigning for a fight against Floyd Mayweather Jr. And that's where the money is, particularly if Mayweather gets past Castillo a little bit later on this year. But as you said earlier in the fight, that's a whole different league. Well, from what I saw tonight, I would definitely have to go with Mayweather or the other top guys. He won the fight, but it was not that impressive to me. As a matter of fact, actually, if Manfredi had a fault the way he said he was going to fight with more intensity and urgency and more punching power, I really believe that Manfredi could have possibly won this fight tonight. Even. I definitely feel that there's a little bit more work that Spadafore has to do. Before and and it off. sounds like it's, if you're Mike Acri and Spadafore's management, you might try to keep him in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh a little while longer, huh? I think it would be a wise decision. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Merchant, your final comments on uh, Paul Spadafore, the Pittsburgh kid. Well, Jim, you know you're in Pittsburgh when you're in a hotel and people come in lugging their kids under one arm and a, and a case of local beer under the other. And we saw a lot of that because there was a big hockey games here over the last couple of days and a lot of fans hanging around. But now there's uh, really four franchises in Pittsburgh. The Pirates, the Steelers, the Penguins, and Paul Spadafore. And Spadafore has better special teams than the Steelers. All right, we'll have a final word on what happened here in the ring in just a moment. Right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming programs on HBO. I have seen the future, and this is it. You really like it? Who wouldn't? On the next episode of Six Feet Under. I heard that he smoked a joint dipped in embalming fluid. Vanessa and I found a house. Oh, Rika, that's great. We're about 11 grand short. I forgive you. I don't need your forgiveness. Okay, yeah, what's going on with you? Maybe I really am a borderline personality. What are you on? Nothing. Don't lie to me. I know nothing. Let's just cut the foreplay. But that's the best part. Winner of two Golden Globes. An all-new episode of Six Feet Under. Sunday night at 9 on HBO with encores every Monday night at 10 on HBO 2. <laughs> Where do the biggest names go <laughs> to speak their mind? I'll be happy to answer. Right here. Big names. Bold questions. I think you had an emotional problem at some point. Bob's back. An all-new season of On the Record with Bob Costas. Premieres Thursday, March 28th on HBO. Get with the program. World Championship Boxing returns March 23 when we travel to London, England for a pair of featherweight fights.
Prince Nassim Hamed, coming off his 11-month layoff, takes on Spain's Manuel Calvo. And Johnny Tapia, hoping for a shot at Hamed later this year, faces Angel Vasquez. Then on April 20, undefeated Floyd Mayweather steps up in weight to challenge Jose Luis Castillo for his lightweight title, HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. Earlier this evening, in the featherweight division, Juan Manuel Marquez won his 38th out of 40 fights and took a big step toward a possible title shot in that division as he easily defeated Australian Robbie Peden. The fight was stopped after the 10th round when Peden cut and bleeding into his own mouth, vomited in his corner. Then Paul Spadafora piled up points in a unanimous decision over Angel Manfredi. All three judges scoring the fight identically, 115-113. Spadafora with his boxing style, able to neutralize Manfredi's attack enough to win the fight. Next on HBO, stay tuned for the artistic landmark, Six Feet Under. And now for the entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know what? The executive producer of HBO Sports is Rick Bernstein. Tonight's edition of Boxing After Dark.